Um, the last, the woman who questioned over there, the last thing you said to her was, um, uh, if you're unhappy, to inquire into that. Into the one who is unhappy. Into the one who is unhappy. What, I mean, I hear the word inquiry a lot, and um, sometimes you use the word just to go deeply into something. I don't really understand that process. And okay. um, it, if it's, you know, a specific thing, is there different ways of doing it or whatever? Okay. So let's say you're unhappy and on the face of it, your unhappiness is caused by a particular relationship. So the suggestion here is, I'm not implying that one shouldn't attend to a relationship, of course, but the suggestion here is, is that the primary response to that feeling of happiness would of that feeling of unhappiness would not to get would not be to get busy changing the relationship but would be rather to ask to turn around in the the other direction away from the apparently objective cause the problem in the relationship towards yourself the i that says i am unhappy and then you ask yourself, okay, what is this I? Because the unhappiness that I feel has not just been caused by this relationship. I've also felt exactly the same unhappiness at other times in my life for completely different reasons. In fact, whenever I felt unhappy, it's always the same feeling but it seems to have numerous different causes. Well, obviously, if it's caused by lots of different things, no single thing can be the cause of that unhappiness. So that should be enough to make us question the, the one that is unhappy. Because that is the one that is always the same in each of these experiences, the outward cause changes all the time, but the I that is unhappy is always the same I. So you ask yourself, okay, well, what am I? Who is this I that is unhappy? And then you start to look for what it is in yourself that is referred to by the word I. So now, do that now. You use the word I many times a day, both in your thoughts and in your speech. So what do you what do you refer to when you say I? This person. Okay. Can yes, but can you be more specific if you were to describe the the person? Mm. Well this person that I identify as myself. Okay. So that that would be a body? Yes. A, a collection, a, a body, a collection of thoughts and memories and feelings. That, that this yes. Kind of thing. Okay. So then you, you start there. So I is this mixture of thoughts and images and feelings and sensations and perceptions. And then you notice, hang on a minute. My thoughts are always coming and going. But I'm not always coming and going. I'm aware of my thoughts. Oh, that's funny. I thought I was my thoughts, but actually... And then you check it out. You, you watch how thoughts arise and go by. And you watch them go by. And you think, oh, that's... Of course... I, I'm not made, what I essentially am is not made out of a thought. So then you take it a bit deeper. You think about your feelings, feeling of being lonely, of being a failure, of being insecure, of not being loved, or whatever guilt, or whatever the 
You think, that's funny. None of these feelings remain with me all the time. They're all just passing by. They feel a little bit deeper than thoughts, but nevertheless, they still all pass by. I don't always feel lonely. I just sometimes feel lonely. That feeling, it appears. I'm aware of it, and then it disappears. But I remain. I remain behind a little bit when the feeling of, let's say, the feeling of loneliness one evening disappears. You don't have the experience, oh, a little bit of me has disappeared with it. Yeah, You just remain. So then you notice, hmm, that's interesting. I, I'm, what I essentially am is not my feelings either. And then what about your sensations? You, you rub your hands together and you're aware of that sensation, you stop, the sensation goes. Your, your sensations, which is the, the larger part of your experience of the body, also they come and go, you are aware of them. Your images, you are aware of them, they come and go. The sights you have, the sounds you have, the tastes you have, all these come and go, but you don't come and go with them. So then a very interesting thing happens. You, you realize, well, I, I thought that what I essentially was was a person, a mixture of thoughts, feelings, sensations, and perceptions, a kind of bundle that was all packaged in this, sort of inside this body. But actually, when I look a little bit more, more closely, all of these are things that come and go. But I am something different from all of those. I'm aware of them all. Are, are you with me so far? Yeah. So then you begin to reevaluate what you refer to when you say I. You think, oh, actually, the I that I have been referring to myself as throughout my life, when you were a five year old girl, you called yourself I, and 10 year old. 20 years old. It's always been I. But your thoughts haven't always been with you. Your feelings haven't always been with you. Your sensations and perceptions haven't always been with you. But you have always been present. You have always been I. The only thing that has never left you, that has never been parted from you, or that you have never ceased to be, is simply this awareness or consciousness that is aware of the person, the mind, feelings, thoughts, feelings, sensations, and also aware of the world. So then when you look back on your unhappiness, you think, well, what is the experience of unhappiness? It's a collection of feelings and thoughts. I'm aware of those feelings and thoughts. They're not always there. They don't go into the make of me. They pass through me or pass by me. In other words, it's not I that is unhappy. I is this perfectly peaceful background of awareness through which or these flow of thoughts and feelings and sensations and perceptions pass. So then we begin to get interested. Wow. I, I didn't realize I was that. All my life, I've just mistaken myself for a cluster of passing thoughts and feelings. And I've lived my life as if I was that. I've related to other people as if I was that. But now that I look, I'm not that. I, I experience that. It appears to me. But I am something that is, as it were, in the background of all of that. So then we really become interested. Well, what is that? I hadn't noticed before. What is this aware presence that I always am? that knows my experience, but that is not itself made out of an experience. That is, that is not itself made out of a thought, a feeling, mm -hmm. a sensation, or a perception. So we begin to give this aware being, that 
that we have now discovered ourselves to be. We give it our attention. We begin to be less interested in the thoughts and the feelings and we become more interested in the one that is aware of them. Now, you might ask, well, who is aware of that? Well, it, it is aware of itself because it is the one that is aware of your experience. In other words, it is this I that is aware of itself. It, it is, as it were, looking at itself as opposed to looking at all the thoughts and feelings that it previously mistook itself to be. And if you do that, and then you remember your unhappiness again, and you turn around and you look and where is that unhappiness now? Where's it gone? Try it. You can't find it. So if you can't find it, having undertaken this investigation, what would the cause of the unhappiness really have been? Well, I can't even imagine. The cause would have been to mistake yourself for the cluster of thoughts and feelings. Oh. <laughs> because as long as you are mistaking yourself for a cluster of thoughts and feelings and sensations, you were having unhappy relationships. Mm. And previously, you always... Uh, this is just, uh, I'm not, it's just an example. Previously, we, we thought, oh, it's all the relationships and the objects and the jobs and the homes and the everything else that caused my unhappiness. But now, when I explore my experience, I find that if I go really to myself and discover what I am, and then I turn around again and look for the unhappiness, as you rightly said, you can't find it anymore. Therefore, the cause of the unhappiness was not the relationships, the situations, mm. the activities. It was the mistaking ourself to be this cluster of thoughts and things. And this gives us a taste of th th this discovery of the cause of unhappiness gives us the hint as to where true happiness lies. Mm. Because once you discover that you can no longer find your unhappiness. What is that experience called when you can't find any unhappiness? What's the simple name for it? I, I don't know. Happiness. <laughs> it's called happiness. Yeah? When you can't find any unhappiness, it's called happiness. <laughs> yeah? And you make this discovery that it was because you came very close to yourself. You ceased mistaking yourself for a cluster of thoughts, feelings, sensations, and perceptions that your unhappiness left you and you found yourself just peaceful. So then you have discovered the most precious thing in life, where happiness resides. Mm -hmm. And you can go back there whenever you want. To begin with, we just visit it from time to time when we're unhappy. But the more we get to know it, the more we fall in love with it and eventually we move it.